Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Exposes the coming of Charles, William, and Harry. Harry can't talk to William because of his greed and selfishness. And how does Meghan Markle be treated if we just look into one side? This is the content of the newsletters today. So far, we're not hearing a lot of specifics about what's going to happen if Harry really does head to the UK for the Invictus Games anniversary. That's the media, I guess, that wants to impose on Harry meeting with his father and brother. Why do they say that? Maybe I read it wrong, but I couldn't find out whether the King or Prince William even wants to meet with Harry, I mean, some sort of willing thing has to come from both sides, I guess, and, um, parties shall all agree, and maybe start there. And I don't believe a meeting with Prince Harry is going to be anywhere near the top of either's list of things to do. So, theoretically, Harry was expressing some interest in meeting with them, but unless the feeling is genuinely mutual to the point where they would like to take time from their incredibly hectic schedules to say hello and hear what he has to say, then I really don't see any meeting happening. Because think about it, guys. What must a king want to say to such a man who is spiteful, resentful, mean, and a traitor? A son whom he would want to disown just to get his hands on some money. Since moving to the US, that is all he really wants from his father. When Charles refused to take Harry's calls, Meghan took over with the begging, of course, she didn't win him over. We know only too well that William wants absolutely nothing to do with Harry and, in particular, not until Kate is better and still receiving treatment where she has to take care of herself. So many articles, so much media hype, in my opinion, it is just people trying to create something great that is never going to happen. Maybe it is a PR firm at work. Poor innocent people. Looking on behalf of Harry and Meghan, but I do not believe it is going to work. Now, a little interesting bit I heard through the grapevine. Harry was wondering if he could make it because he cannot be guaranteed that security would be there for him. Nonsense, of course, but it sounds like he is kind of getting ready to opt out of going to the UK, which, in turn, lets Meghan off the hook. The invisible children, of course, will stay put, they will not be going anywhere. If Harry does not show up, the Invictus Games are also off the hook. I think their wishes will be granted. I'm sure they don't want Harry to come because if he does, then there's no William, and I really think that's who they want. Most accounts state that they want William for a variety of reasons, and foremost because he is phenomenal at being a figurehead. They're already being super nice. He is going to give them good press for the first time in a number of years, the Invictus Games has really not been having a good time. It all began when Harry called off that U.S. fundraiser. I know it was during COVID, but hey. And Meghan, honestly, that was the final straw. But if they rule out Harry, they rule out Meghan, too. Absolutely no way back for the Invictus, unless he doesn't show up. We don't know what will happen, do we, but I can't see Harry wanting to risk a booing and a heckling from veterans, which seems likely and possibly the marquee audience. It would be much easier for him to sit and enjoy where he is. He can relax in his sports shorts and a t-shirt, doing what he wants. Smoking lots and lots of joints. Well, no, William has been accused of being selfish. Well, that's it then. That William. Just how rude of him, so greedy, so selfish. As Prince Harry eloquently states in his volume, A Blank Slate, my brother always desired a larger bedroom, and he always desired more length, sausages at breakfast. But what, on the other hand? How many teenagers do you know when he was given the alternative of which room to use? The majority of them are simply put in a room and have no say in it. After all, this is his chamber. That behemoth went on to be overrun by a brother or a sister when one was born remained his chamber. It was a given that William had a place at first, for fuck's sake, after all, he arrived initially. Even if he has this, you aren't left to wonder why that is his chamber, you simply sleep there. Then, when Harry was born, there were a sufficient number of chambers for even them, for even he was given his own. 
and then that became his, it became Harry's. The size of it is irrelevant, I'm certain it was a big enough. Now there were his parents, and his nanny, and his album, whoever served as a host, I don't know, they would give you this chamber. And if it allowed them to go someplace, they would want to go no matter which side, still, William would be allotted the bigger chamber. I must guess that he did keep a bedroom, you see, when they visited. And I guess, you see, probably it's more significant than Harry's. So it's life. And in my family, I would have said that you would have guaranteed the bigger chamber, however, that does not have anything to do with the fact that you were trying to grievously offend me. Yeah. And they didn't even ask the boys for their opinions. I mean, just asking for them to start a fight. An adult would have chosen the rooms, whether it's the parents. Really, it happens with the same width if adults go and stay anywhere as a guest. You don't just show up and say, I want that room. I don't even care if you gave me this room, I want that one. That's mostly what people don't do, I guess. Harry also never complained about his life as William's younger brother until Meghan Markle entered his life. And I'm sure she whispered into Harry's ear, complaining, telling Harry how unfair everything was, revealing how she was certain William received more attention, more perks, and everything else. Well, Harry, news for you. From the research undertaken, the firstborn will be greatly involved in looking after his or her younger siblings, and therefore will take responsibility much early than his other brothers and sisters who may just play and play to their content without a care in the world. Maybe if he had an elder brother, then he could not have been enjoying these days. He had to be much serious in his life, and he even had to take care of his younger brother. He would have had to set a good example. And sometimes I do wonder how that would have worked out. I mean, Harry always sounded pretty set on carrying on his prince duties, but I think really he was quite looking forward to being able to help William when William becomes king. Of course, everything has changed since then. Because Meghan Markle slithered into his life, and so Harry's hidden personality has come out. And now we are seeing him in his real face, spiteful, malicious, and cruel, who seems to enjoy humiliating and attacking people very close to him before, within the family. I'm not sure that Harry even has the capacity to love anybody. And I would guess he's busy making up for all that time when he thought that William was given favorable treatment. Harry said, William is trapped in the royal family, so, I don't know, it does seem like the position he kind of got thrust into at the end. Here is set the stage for Harry to be able to live his best life and, of course, take any of the bedrooms at will in their nine-bedroom McMansion. He can eat as many sausages at breakfast as he likes, and he can do everything that he, the little boy, resented William doing. Meanwhile, William is not having a good time of it. I mean, I can't get the picture of how hard his life is at the moment, worrying about Catherine and his father and taking all the responsibilities that, well, one time or another would have been shared. But do you think Harry ever feels guilty for what he's done? No, I don't think so. I think he's too busy being bullied by Meghan Markle. I suppose that's what you do when you can't do much else except to find a break by taking some magic mushrooms or whatever substance it is he likes to abuse these days. And whereas, in his prime, whatever he felt like doing in not facing any responsibilities at all, no consequences, being a spoiled brat, still is, and overprotected. I don't mean to say that he turned into this horrible person all of a sudden, I mean, he's always been like that. But the worst for him was when he married that nasty, ugly woman. She just encouraged him to be his real self, and look at how that turned out. Harry is such a disgrace to his family, and I have no empathy for either him or Meghan. In other words, Harry would be telling us soon enough that it is very unfair that his lot never included the power to boss over a little brother or sister, poor baby. To which another could easily answer how they had been charged to look after their young ones, simply because maybe, they were not so smart, too plain, and they needed looking after. What's with calling William greedy, though? I mean, what, was he that greedy when he spent millions of pounds of his own to build homes for the homeless? He donated, too, one million pounds to Invictus Games, which was back in 2023. Does anybody know where or how he got that? 
The millions really did come from one of the lawsuits filed over the phone hacking, he ended up winning, so they had to pay him. Instead of keeping the money for himself the way Harry would, William took all that money he had won, and he donated it to the Invictus Games. He did not take a penny for himself. Except that Harry and Meghan have just donated to Invictus, charging their speeches, charging their appearances, the inappropriate and overbig wardrobes of Meghan, the jewelry, the parties, the restaurants, the most expensive hotel they could find, with, of course, the most expensive room in it. I think they have to have the whole floor. How exactly is William greedy? I mean, I understand that the Squatties are going to want William to appear greedy, because that will then make Harry and Meghan look better, but he's not. Right? Now, the one last thing we've got to talk about. Do you really think that if we ignore Meghan, she'll get the message and go away? Well, no, unfortunately, my friends, that would never work. According to Meghan, none of what we propose would ever work, because, you see, whatever she does is perfect. And it's always our fault because, see, we just can't witness her perfection. We can't see how cool and great she really is. And that is exactly why she only keeps repeating herself time and time again forcing herself on us, shoving herself in our faces, and still making the same mistakes time and time again. So, Meghan Markle was trying to take the thunder from the Prince and Princess of Wales by launching her own new venture called American Riviera Orchard, asking people to subscribe to their name and contact details, not even having one item yet to sell. She hasn't even registered the name or the logo yet, so it easily could end up being a big nothing burger. She wouldn't be able to trademark any good that she would want to sell until it is formally registered and ready to go, something that would take quite a long time. It's been almost a month since that launch, and no progress has been made. Yet at the same time, they are so proud, saying that the site counts on almost 600,000 followers. However, the latest rumor is that most of the people are actually bots. For someone who's meant to be world famous, Mega Marco seems to be getting very little support for this new venture. I mean, he was after at least 500 grand in the first week with many more millions to follow. It hasn't happened. And any subscriber does so at the risk of having the company sell his private information to other companies for the other company's marketing purposes. You know, Megan will do that. Fact is, even the pundits seem to predict she is doomed to fail again but I expect she will do as she always does. She'll pick herself up. She would look into the mirror and tell herself, I am wonderful, and go on to something else that, of course, didn't work out. But you see, Megan has had four years in the United States to succeed. And she's still nowhere close to that. I'm guessing there will be very few tomorrows for her, regrettably, because she runs out of time really fast. She never has a good idea. I would just as soon see Meghan Markle fail. Fade out into obscurity. And if she ever does manage to annoy us again, let it be quietly and with no PR. The problem with Meghan is that she has nothing to contribute, a solid case of not really that useful. And yet, I'm sure it is damn difficult for the PR people to try and sell Meghan to the world when there is nothing at all within her, but that is not going to prevent her from trying. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.